hello there. Welcome to Tuesdays with Annette. Oh my God, I'm so fizzy about this week because we're changing it up. I'm giving you more of Annette and I'm sure that's what you've been wanting for so long. <laughs> okay, so today is going to be a day where we cook together. If you, you know, if you want, you can join me and we'll do an interactive cooking class. And I think this is going to be fantastic because I want young and old to learn the cooking skills of healthy. And that's what you're going to do with these recipes every Tuesday for the month of April. So to start it all off, I thought, well, what could I do that's a really good interactive one, but maybe you might struggle with and you need Annette's guidance? Well, it's because it's scones. That's right, some people say to me they cannot make them and I go, please, have you tried my recipe? So today it's out of book four, we're cooking the fantastic simple light scones and that's the recipe just here. Now, if you're homeschooling, you know, why not get the kids in the kitchen with you now and because everyone needs to know how to cook, no matter how old you are. And I always say with the teenagers, cook, let them know how to cook because eventually if they know that they can cook, they'll leave home. Otherwise, they'll never go. Trust me. So now, let's look at what we need because we're going to do this together. I hope you've got your recipe there. Um, we've, you know, prepped you up and I'll be telling you at the end of the show what's next week's uh, recipe so you once again can get prepared for that. Right, so we need equipment. So what you start with is I'm going to use a glass measure jug and that's going to be measuring my margarine because it goes in the microwave and I like using the glass one for that. My plastic one is going to be measuring milk and I'm also looking at the scone cutters. Now, I mean, some people don't have scone cutters. I mean, I've had mine for 100 years and you want a six, here we go, six centimetre scone cutter. You don't have one? It's okay, I'm here to help you. That's what this class is all about. I'll be using this today, but if you don't have, look at the things I found in my cupboard. I mean, have you got one of these? Because this is about six and a half, so they're a little bit bigger, but that could be what you could use that. You could use a glass, measure it and get the smallest one you got, because you want to get a dozen out. Look, even here, the Tupperware thing. It's fine, and this little drink cup, one of my grandkids, at six centimetres, it's perfect. It's called Improvise. Let's look at what you need, and it'll be perfect, all right? So now, we've got the cutters sorted. Now what we need is a scraper. I'm using a scraper, you probably don't need it, but I like to scrape so I don't miss out on things. You're gonna need a wooden spoon, my trusty wooden spoon. You're going to need a whisk. You know, it doesn't matter what size. I'm doing small because I'm doing it, going to whisk it in there, so it's perfect. You're also going to need a, a teaspoon measure because we're going to be measuring the sugar and also the margarine. Now, I've got my scales here because I find that the easiest way to go. Um, we want 30 grams and we're going to melt it. But if you don't have scales, don't worry. Just use them. These are my 15 mil tablespoons. So you want two flat ones of those. So you need a measure spoon. I've got a fork. Now this was what you could use if you don't have a whisk. So just to let you know. And I'm going to use a spoon to weigh up the, the margarine. So, and I've got a pastry brush. But you know what, I'm going to show you at the end. If you don't have a pastry brush, use your fingers. I'll show you about it all later. So that's what we need. Hello, if you've just joined me, we're in the kitchen doing my first interactive cooking class and we're making scones from book four. Now there's loads of scone recipes in my cookbooks, but I thought let's do the plain one because then you can go from there and make fabulous scones, whatever you like. So, ingredients. Now you want to have it on your bench. Okay, so we need two eggs. You want some fluorolite margarine, skim milk, as well as I've put a little bit of skim milk in a dish because that's to brush on the scones at the end. Self-raising flour, some sugar, and cooking spray. Now, flour, not everyone has it at the moment because we're in you know crazy times. If you've only got plain flour, once again, don't panic. You can use plain flour as long as you have baking powder in your cupboard. Now, if you've got baking powder, not baking soda, if it says the word soda, it's the wrong product. It's baking powder, and if you're gonna use that with your plain flour today, 
with two cups, you're gonna use four teaspoons. So for every cup, it's two teaspoons of baking powder, and you put that in when you're sifting the flour. But we've got self-raising flour, so I don't need to worry about that. So there we go. Now before I begin, I've also got my rubber gloves, because I just don't want it un, you know, in the nails and all that stuff, and scones can be a bit sticky. I've also got a bowl, and ready to make my scones. So have you got a bowl out? You know, checking off, we need a tray. I've got a great non-stick one, which is fabulous, but you know, you just want a flat tray. So have you got one of those on your, your bench? And I think that's everything. Oh no, we need a sifter. Now, once again, if you don't have a sifter and you've got a strainer, it will work just as well. And the idea of using the sifter is that you um, lighten the flour, aerate the flour, and also take any lumps out. Um, but flour these days is pretty good quality. And I've, as I said, I've got my gloves to wear, but what I want us to all do, now, first of all, I'm checking, get everything all out, you know, rush to the pantry or the fridge if you need to get your, your milk out right now, and we'll measure it and get it sorted in a minute. But firstly, because of what's going on right now, I am super into hygiene. Um, more than ever before. So I'm going to go over to my sink and I want you all to go over, if you're cooking with me today, I want you to wash your hands. Now remember the ruling, it's 20 seconds. And for me, I'm using the doTERRA, uh, it's called On Guard, you know? It's fantastic and I find that really works. So I'm going to do my 20 seconds, can we count please? Three, four, five, are you doing it too? Six, get those thumbs, seven, you know, I feel a bit like a surgeon. Nine, ten, a little bit of water. Keep going, are we nearly there? It's really important. Um, even though I'm wearing gloves, you might not be wearing gloves, so we won't uh, get our germs on anybody else. All right, done. Rinse it off. And we are ready to go. So, oh my gosh, how exciting is this? Our first home ex class together. I mean, I'm having flashbacks in time when I was a wee lassie. Yes, so we need to measure the margarine first. So let's get the scales. As I said, I'm gonna measure it. You, what are you gonna do? Are you gonna, you know, have you got my spoons? Well, you're fine. And you can just measure two flat tablespoons or it's 30 grams as I'm doing now. Twenty-five. A little bit more. Perfect. All right, so I'm done with the margarine. How are you going? Have you got your margarine ready? Now, just a little tip as well. I'm going to microwave this and we don't want it splattering all over the microwave. So grab a little bit of cling wrap like I'm doing now and just place it over the top. Not only does it help keep your microwave clean, but I'm not going to lose all my margarine because I want it in the scones. So I'm going to put that on for 20 seconds. So if you've got your microwave, now if you don't have a microwave, then you just need to melt it um, in a fry pan, like in a pot, but hopefully, I think most people nowadays, we have my, uh, microwaves. 20 seconds. Alrighty, how are you going? Are you keeping up with me? My God, so remember we're making the simple light scones out of book four, and we're going to, we, we've preheated the oven. Have you got the preheated oven? I'm sure you've got the recipe and you're prepared ahead. Oh, there's my margarine. Um, I've got that at 220 degrees. Now with scones though, you want to make sure that that lights off on the oven because you want it hot. 220 always is the secret to a good scone, okay? Now um, what I'm going to do next is I'm going to measure everything out. See look I had a bit of a, a splatter there with the marge, so it's good. Okay, let's do it. You've got your two eggs. Now, you know me, I'm not using the yolk. No, no, we don't do that. What am I doing? We need to prep. <laughs> oh, I'm even getting the recipe in a mixed order. 
So there you go. So if you're, you're not doing it right, don't worry. I've just made a mistake. Don't crack your egg yet. What we're going to do is measure half a cup of skim milk. Now you want it to be pretty exact because if you do too much or too little, it'll either make it too dry or too wet. So are we doing that? Skim milk. Now if you're um, lactose intolerant, you'll use the low-fat lactose-free milk or you could use the uh, low-fat almond milk if you wanted to make it dairy-free. And instead of the floral light, you might want to use that dairy-free margarine as well. So here we go. Now I'm right to do the eggs. So we've got the milk. We're going to pour that into the margarine because the marge is hot from being in there. So have you got, your, you've got this happening? So we've got our two cups. We're going to now pour the milk into the margarine. We're going to mix that up, use, use your fork if you need to. And now, hello Annette, rushing, we put in the two egg whites into the cup, your measure cup. Now I'm saving 12 grams of fat straight up because I want the raising ability which comes from the egg white and it doesn't really help the scone by having a yolk in it. So now as we go, we want to be a clean um, cook. So we're going to clean up as we go. So let's put these in. Have you got your soapy sink going? I mean, come on, you've been watching me Thursdays with Annette for what? Do you know what? Three years on Thursday, we're celebrating our anniversary. So in the soapy sink, whisk it up. I mean, scones aren't hard, are they? It's just knowing what you're doing. And I'm so excited you joined me today. We're going to be doing this the whole of April, so if you can support me, um, it would be really great. So my idea is that you need to be letting everyone know about the show. That's great. Have you, have you got that up to me now? All right, so what we've done so far is just recoup. We're making the scones. Now, remember, this is a, a good one for kids. Young and old can make this recipe. It's not hard. And you know, you might just have to help them with getting the, the margarine out of the microwave, but that's okay. So now what we're going to do, it's the flour. So this is the dry mix, and I call this the wet mix. So we need two cups of self-raising. And if once again, if you've only got plain, remember, where is it? The baking powder. You'll use four teaspoons and you'll put it in your sifter. All right, so let's measure two cups. And when you're measuring, a tip here is, you know, I know we all like to do it like this, but to get it accurate and make sure you've got the right amount, I'll show you, I just bang it. See, dog, that was full, but when I've banged it, it needs a little more. Now, if you're going to use wholemeal, because that's all you have, wholemeal, oh, that's perfect, wholemeal, wholemeal self-raising is fine. You just might find that the scones are a little heavier. Okay, so now what are we going to do now? We're going to sift the flour. To be honest with you, if you don't have a sifter or anything like that, the flour's pretty good these days. You might find that you don't have to sift it really. You just don't want lumps, so just make sure you don't have that. So sift the flour in. How are you going? Are you keeping up with me? The good news is this scone is really low in fat, 1.5 grams of fat, and it has only 95 cows. So, you know, if you're worried about gaining weight over this time being, you know, in isolation or at home a lot, then my recipes are going to help you more than ever before. All right, now we get the teaspoon. Remember we had the teaspoon and we're going to do the two teaspoons of sugar. So it's level teaspoons. You don't want like piled up because it doesn't need to be super sweet, the scones, because you're normally going to add jam to it. Um, like I like fruit in um, scones as well. Like this is where you would add in if you wanted to put um, raisins, uh, sultanas, uh, dates, things like that. But there's variations with a lot of the recipes, so you'll know how to do that if you want to do it. All right, so now we put the wet mix in the flour. 
And this is where, because I, I don't want to miss anything, I'm going to scrape out that little bit of mix. All right, let's put these over in the sink. We're done with that. And this is where I'm going to put my gloves on because as I, said, I don't like getting it under my nails. It gets a bit messy. So if you have gloves, start putting them on now. Now, if you've just joined me, hello. Welcome to our first interactive cooking class. We're making together scones. And I'm excited to do this with you because I want you to know how fabulous my scone recipe is and how easy it is. So what we do is you get your wooden spoon now. Are you keeping up with me? And you just gently fold that wet together with the flour. You're doing great. Now, you'll get to a point, you don't want to beat it. Don't be beating this, just fold it through. Gently get that flour mixed in with the wet mix. And you'll get to a point where you go, okay, I'm not going to get all that flour mixed in here. And that's when you have to get in and get your hands dirty. Now remember, this is only 1.5 grams of fat of scone and 95 cows. So, I mean, you might want to make these over Easter. Um, why not? I mean, I'm excited about afternoon tea in the Simply Two Good headquarters, I'm telling you. So there's, this is, see where I'm coming in now? And I'm working the loose flour so that it all combines. It's a soft mix, but it shouldn't be wet. If it's too wet, you've put a little bit too much milk in probably. All right, so now we're going to roll it out. Let me move that. So what you're going to do... Oh, I've spilt my milk bill. Look at my mess. Let me get a cloth. Oh, goodness. Now, I mean, just take a moment. I've spilt my milk. Bill can get me some out of the cupboard, of the fridge I mean. That'll do for now. Alright, so what we're going to do is we're going to actually make the scones and shape them. So let's get the tray out. Cooking spray. You've got your cutter ready. Yep, we need that. And now what we're going to do is get some more flour, put it down on the, your, your bench and then lift that flour. Look at that scone mix. I know. Are you feeling a bit excited about how clever you are? All right, so here we go. Now, you, in the olden days, you'd get there and you'd roll that. No, not the Annette Sim way. Can I tell you a really quick story about scones? I remember when I was making these recipes, my hubby Billy, my gorgeous Billy, is a master chef. And I said to him, why? Why do you have to get there with the butter in the flour and do it all that? Because it's just a pain. And he goes, that's just how you do it. So I went, okay. So I went in the kitchen. I made the batch. They were fabulous. And he said, see, I told you that's what you've got to do. I said, oh, no, darling. I melted the margarine. Who could be bothered? And he went, okay, we'll keep doing it because they're fabulous. So now I want to get this into a nice round shape. And you just pat, just pat it down, as I said, keeping it. How's it looking? Are you you're still with me? Now, every now and then, just pick up the flour a bit, put it on the top. We want to get this mix to, uh, look, and this is where the ruler, if you want to be pedantic, and I like to get a dozen if I can, you need to measure, and it needs to be about one and a half, two centimetres, and that's actually where I'm at right now. And that way you're getting the right size. Okay, you could use the fluted side. I like the straight side, so that's what I'm going to do. Dip into the flour, it's really important. We're going to do 12 scones, and one of the things that people don't think to do, which is the way you do scones, is you actually put them next to each other. You want them to kiss. Get your flour in, go right to the edge, kiss once again. And we're going to do 12, hopefully, that's how it's going to come out. And even does. Once again, kissing the scones, put them together. Okay. 
And see how easy it is if you've got a nice cutter, once again though, into the flour. So how many have we got there? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. How are you going? Have you got yours done yet? So when you get to that point, I want you to pick it up and combine it again together, push it together, and we're going to flatten that again. And from this, we're going to get the last four scones. So one, two, three. Now, with the last bit of pastry, or dough I should call it, I'll show you a trick. Aren't you glad you joined me today? Because this is fun. What you do is you get your cutter, the remainder bits, shove it in the, the hole, push it down firmly, and there is your last scone. I tend to turn it over, it's up to you, but there it goes. There's my last. They're all kissing, they're fabulous. So there you go. See, there they are. How's yours looking? Are they looking like that? Now, as I said, we need some milk. We just want to coat the top. Just need a tiny bit of milk. And this is where you use your pastry brush and you wet the top. Just brush the tops. Don't soak them. Just so you see it's wet. That's what you want. I've even used, one time I had an old a, a paintbrush that was brand new, but I used that as my pastry brush. If you're saying, and then I don't have one, once again, I have you covered. Get your fingers in, drip it in, and melt it. I mean, push it on, pat it on. See, same thing, you're just using your fingers. All right, so our scones are looking a bit fabulous. So what are we gonna do? We're gonna put them in that oven now. Remember, 220 for probably 12 to 15 minutes. I'm gonna put 12 in my timer, nicely in the center of the oven. Remember, 220. I'm timing it for 12, and probably about halfway, I'm going to um, turn it because I've got a bit of a hot spot in my oven. Now normally I'd wipe this down, but I'm just gonna do that <laughs> because I can. And you know, if you feel like they, they just have to have a little bit of a brown top to them and you have got your scones. Do you wanna see what they look like? I made some just before. Look at that. Oh yeah. That's what your scones are gonna look like in about 12 minutes. How fantastic. So, 12 scones. Book two, oh no, book four. But did you know I have 10 scone recipes in total, uh, plus the variations, they're sweet and savory. So if you like scones, you know what? I've got you covered with some fantastic recipes. Now, it is suitable to be frozen as well. I mean, when you look at this, I'm going to show you what I would do now. I would get my tea towel, and see how they're like virtually all joined together, that's fantastic and I'm gonna break them up. And that's our afternoon tea, everybody's excited. You know, you can use the low-fat flora margarine, the dairy whipped cream is a good one, the light one. Uh, you can, um, you know, a little bit of um, jam would be great, and then close it up to keep it warm. I know, we all want warm scones. Would you like to win book four so you can make this recipe and all the other recipes in book four? Well. You just need to, now there's a new system, okay, It's because it's Tuesdays with Annette, it's not Thursday with Annette, it's Tuesdays with Annette. What I'm going to do is I want you to like, share, and we really want you to share this so everyone can have the joy of learning how to cook scones. But then, how you can win a copy of book four, hello, three copies will be given out to you if you're the lucky winner. You have to, in the comments, one co you get one copy, yeah, Three people, they're going, what? Three people will be winning a personally signed copy of book four. I'll make the announcement next Tuesday, 
but how you win it is you like, share, and then in the comments, I want to see a photo of your scones. That's right. It's not about the best looking scones to win. It's just the only way you can win it is by putting your picture on the comments. I mean, hello, who knew weight loss could be so deliciously healthy? Yes, I know, it's fantastic. So next week's show, super fizzy about that. I think, I want a recipe that, you know, young and old can make it, okay? People that haven't got a lot of skills, or even if you have, you don't care, you don't want to spend hours in the kitchen. It's going out of book two next week, and it's the crunchy nut chicken. Oh my gosh, it's fabulous. So if you want any more tips or recipes, why not go to my website, simplytogood.com.au, and don't forget to join me next Tuesday. So thanks for being here. Oh, oh, before I go, stop it. I'm a bit excited. Tomorrow, yes, I'm coming back. So tomorrow, it's gonna to be a chat. We're not in the kitchen, but we're talking. And I like that, I think it's good. I've got some great tips for you on Easter. How do we get through Easter without binging on the chocolate and you know, massacring the Easter buns? I've got it all covered for you tomorrow. So join me at two o'clock tomorrow where we can talk Easter. And Thursday, our, our normal show is our third anniversary, so that's special. You might be surprised what's being given away next on this Thursday because of it. Hello, just telling you. But I'm making the honey prawn stir fry. Alrighty guys, see you tomorrow, same time, two o'clock. Bye now.